Well, here it is. As you briefly saw in my New Year's special, I have a brand new voice evacuation addressable fire alarm control system that sits on a brand new board. So this video is going to be kind of a complete overview of the system and how it works. So if you want to just see me pull fire alarms, then you're just going to have to wait until the next video. But I highly recommend you watch this video in order to understand a lot of the next video. And then also you'll learn a lot about fire alarm systems in this video. First thing on the list is showing you the entire board itself. I have gone ahead and built an entire replica new board um, of the board that houses currently my ADT Unimode 10UD system and my Kitty FX-64 system. So this is an entire new board. On the back of it we do have an open space for a system on the back. You won't see one here for a few months, but I am planning on getting something simplex for the back of this board. But for now, we'll just focus on this side of the board, which houses the new system. One thing I like about this board is on the bottom we have a power strip, just like the other board. Now another feature I like that the other board has as well is if we go up and look in the top of this board, I can run all of my wire all of my wiring in between both sides of the board so that way none of the wires have to be shown. So and you, when you see in there all the wires I use to wire up the system, none of that is shown when you're just looking at the board and that's really nice. This right here is the main fire alarm control panel. It is a Firelight Alarms by Honeywell MS9200 UDLS addressable fire alarm control panel. This fire alarm control panel can have up to 198 points and each point is like a pull station or a smoke detector. This panel has um, non resettable power, 24 volt. Um, it has resettable power, which is 24 volt. It has four NACs, notification appliance circuits, three relays, although two of them are programmable. Um, it can have an LCD ADF enunciator or an AN and AD enunciator, and it has one SLC. The panel also has onboard dialer connections, which is really helpful. So let's go ahead and open it up and see the inside. So looking more on the inside, as we can see, I am doing uh, the battery hack just like I'm doing with my SFP400 system. This hack basically gives fake power to the battery connections and tricks the panel into thinking it has batteries. That way I don't get an annoying battery trouble every time. As we can see, we have our various keys here. We have an acknowledge button, we have an alarm silence button, we have a fire drill button, and we have a system reset button. Here's an enter button, we have some arrows, and then our number keys. Up here for our lights, we have an AC power light, a fire alarm light, a supervisory light, a trouble light, a maintenance light, an alarm silenced light, a disabled light, a battery light, and then a ground light. On the bottom of the panel, right here, I just have some spare mini modules, and then um, a Wheelock Safe Path key, and then some spare FPL uh, 4C wire. Um, I have like 500 more feet of this stuff stored away in a different place, but this is just a little bit I store here. Now since this is a speaker strobe system, you need some sort of voice amplifier for the speakers. So the system I chose was a Cooper Wheelock SafePath SPMNS uh, voice evacuation mass notification system. Basically this system would supply power to all of the speakers on a fire alarm system. This can be used as a fire alarm system a mass notification system or a combination of both. It also has um, a live paging feature which I'll show you in a minute. So let's go ahead and open up the panel and see the inside. So this is what the inside of the panel looks like. As we can see we have a system trouble light, we have an AC trouble light, we have an alarm active light, and then we have an, a strobe active light. Um, the alarm active light will turn on whenever there's any kind of alarm or message playing. The strobe, uh, the strobe active light will turn on whenever uh, the panel's uh, power output for the strobe is turned on. Down here we have a trouble silence button and then a record button. And then these right here are all of the pre-made messages that we can use. So um, I'll, I'll demonstrate a couple of these. Um, if at any point in time you need to give a message to the building you can just go in and push one of these and you won't even have to page. So uh, I'll give you two examples of two messages it can do. May I have your attention please? This is a test of the Cooper Wheelock evacuation system. Repeat, this is only a test. 
There's one. And then the sound was coming from the actual speaker strobes that are placed around the building. And then I'll go ahead and give a different example of a message. May I have your attention, please? The National Weather Service has issued a severe weather warning for our area. Yep, there it is. And then right here we can do live voice paging throughout um, the building. And this would just act just like um, a PA system. So if you just take out the microphone and then hold this down, you're now live throughout the building. So for example, test, test. Yep, there that is. Now let's go ahead and open up this panel even more and see the inside. So just open that up. Throughout the, this big circuit board right here, there's a bunch of dim switches. That's how you uh, program the panel. So this panel does not have any uh, knockouts that go from the panel directly into the wall. So instead of that, I had to improvise. I went ahead and knocked out one of the um, knockouts on the side of the panel um, and then put some steel conduit that goes into a junction box and that junction box takes all the wires and uh, puts them behind the board or in this case into the wall. So in order to run AC power into the panel, I had to create a second junction box so with this, I have the AC power cord coming from behind the board, comes into this junction box, through the steel conduit, up right here as you can see, and then it wires right into the panel. Now, I do have one thing I do not like about this system as much. So when I was wiring it up, I also had this. This is a SafePath remote microphone. With this, you can page throughout the building all from this. It's kind of like an enunciator. Um, I got it and I wired it all up and I did everything correctly and it didn't work. I did everything correctly according to the wiring diagrams, followed all the instructions step by step and nothing. And that is really honestly sort of annoying to me. Um, but thankfully I did get my money back on this. So, but yeah, that's just the one thing that annoys me with the system that that didn't work. But other than that, it's worked out great for me. Now I'm gonna show you the rest of the devices on this system. So first I'm gonna talk about these three modules on the system and what they do. So we'll start with the one up, up at the top here. This is a Firelight um, MMF-300, I believe is the model number, monitor module. This module basically allows me to have conventional pulse stations on the system. And currently this module right now is hooked up to this over here which is a Firelight conventional BG12SL pull station. Now, to the module in the middle. This is a Firelight zone interface module. I believe the model of this is MMF-302. This module allows me to have conventional smoke detectors on the system. You can't hook a normal smoke detector up with a normal monitor module because that then draws too much power from the SLC. It is. And this uh, interface module is hooked up to this conventional system sensor I3 smoke detector. The last monitor module here. Uh, here, this is just a standard monitor, mo monitor module just like the first one I showed you. And this is hooked up to this emergency push station right here. Now, what could that do? Well, when I push this, this monitor module activates, which then activates the panel. And then what happens after that is the alert strobe up there will then flash and then the speakers will come on saying that there's an emergency. When this happens, the normal fire alarm strobes don't flash because there's not a fire, but the alert strobe will flash and then the speaker will still activate. Now, you're probably wondering about the trouble you may or may not have just seen on the enunciator. This is the one thing I dislike about this system. Um, I have this uh, Firelight LCD ADF enunciator wired up. It's all wired correctly according to the wire diagrams and instructions, and yet, um, when I have it wired up perfectly normally, this happens. It comes on saying, LCD ADF Supervisory. Now, when I acknowledge it from the panel, I just acknowledge it from the panel, and it stays there. But here's the weird thing. Whenever I tap any button on the LCD ADF, it goes away. And it'll go away for about a minute and then it'll come back. And this is really weird because I have everything wired correctly 
and yet I'm still getting this um, trouble. So if anyone can give me any information on how to fix this, that would be great. And here comes the trouble again. Thankfully it goes away for about a minute every time I acknowledge it. So with that being said, I'm going to be editing this out and all the system tests, but it's still going to be pretty annoying to me. So what's honestly probably going to be happening in the long run is I'm going to be getting rid of this enunciator and buying in a Firelight AN and AD enunciator to replace it. Now for notification appliances, right here we have a Wheelock E50-24MCW speaker strobe. The strobe on this is set on 15 Candela. Right here we have an EST Alert Genesis, and this is just a strobe. And then over here we have a Wheelock uh, ZRS remote strobe. To the left of the system sensor i3, I have this right here. This is a Firelight SD350 addressable smoke detector. It's photoelectric and it works great. Now, right below the Firelight SD350 smoke detector, we have this right here. Just a standard Firelight BG12 LX pull station. This is addressable. And the one thing I really like about this is the little blinky light inside, that pulling. I really like that. That's a really cool feature, I think. And then to the right of that, we have this empty back box here. With this, I'm going to be having probably another Firelight BG12LX. Um, you'll probably see one by the first system test. And then if you go even more to the right, there's that uh, single action pull station I showed you earlier. Now, sort of below the first ro row of pull stations, I have these three pull stations right here. These are addressable Firelight BG10s. The model of these is BG10LX. They have the key on the side and they're all addressable. So these work great with my system. Now below the BG10s right here, I have something else that's kind of cool. Or actually really cool, honestly. I really like this part of the system. Right here, I have a Firelight D35PL addressable duct detector. These kinds of smoke detectors are special and they're meant to be monitoring um, air ducts. So, as we can see, we have a junction box. Um, wires come in through here. They go, go into the duct detector. Um, and then also over here to the right of the junction box, we have this. This is a system sensor. I think it's like RST151 key switch. Um, this right here basically can control the duct detector because sometimes these are mounted in ceilings. So with this, I can test the duct detector and also reset the duct detector which is really nice. And that is the entire system. I cannot wait to start making videos on the system as voice evacuation systems are becoming a technology that is being used more and more in today's day. What makes these different than regular horn strobe systems is that with voice evacuation systems, the fire alarm gives actual live or pre-recorded voice commands on the type of, on the type of emergency and how to re react. With a normal horn strobe system, the alarm just goes off and just keeps on sounding until the panel is silenced. Most buildings now that are more than seven stories tall are required to have voice evacuation systems, or uh, just big buildings in general are required to have voice evacuation systems now. So I cannot wait to start demonstrating this on my YouTube channel. Well guys, that was the video. Thank you for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day.